Maybell the Cable Car by Virginia Lee Burton. Maybell was a cable car, a San Francisco cable car. Cling clang, clinkety clang, up and down and around she went. Maybell had a bell on top, ring two to go and one to stop. Underneath she had a grip to grab the cable under the street. She had three kinds of brakes, one for the wheels, one for the track, and an emergency brake to jam in the slot so she could stop whenever she ought. Maybell had a grip man and a conductor. The grip man pulled the levers, pushed the pedal, and rang the bell for Maybell to stop or go. The conductor collected the fares, called out the streets, and helped with the rear wheel brakes when the hills were very steep. Fares, please! Ting, ting! Let's go! Not too fast and not too slow. Stop at the crossing, wait for the light, then ride the cable right up to the top. Stop and look at the view. Down we go on the other say. Look out for the curve. Hold on. Down again to the end of the line. Turn around and do it again. Fares, please. Ting, ting. Let's go. No hill too steep, no load too heavy, always cheerful and most polite. She rang her gong and sang her song from early morn to late at night. From late at night to early morn, Mabel rested with her sisters in the big green barn. Born in San Francisco long ago, they had watched their city change and grow. The new come in and the old go out while they remained the same. At night, while well, the city slept, and they exchanged the news of the day, or played the game, remember when, until it was time to go out again. Remember when the city was small, when everyone knew everyone else, and nobody hurried and nobody worried. Those were the good old times. Remember when mansions crowned the hills, when our family was large and rich and famous, the pride of the city and joy of the people. Those were the gay old times. Remember the Sunday afternoon rides out to the public parks and beaches and the all-day outings on holidays. Those were the merry old times. They seldom remembered the terrible fire which destroyed the city overnight. Instead, they remembered how quickly the city rebuilt and grew some more. They remembered when many of the cable lines were changed into electric lines. And they remembered the first horseless carriage and how people laughed and yelled, Get a horse! Now the streets were crowded with traffic and everyone hurried and seemed to be worried. Electric trolleys and gasoline buses had replaced almost all of the old family lines. Maybell and her sisters worked for the city. The city had been so busy growing, she had neglected her little cable cars, and they needed a new coat of paint. Maybell was always first out in the morning and last to come in at night. She loved her city, she loved her work, and most of all, she loved the people. Maybell's hill was very steep and very slippery when wet. Even taxi cabs stayed off this hill in damp or foggy weather. But no hill too steep for Maybell. No matter the weather, wet or dry, she could not slip. She had her grip and three kind of brakes besides. Ting, ting, ting! When visitors came from the rest of the world to see the sights of the city, they admired the beautiful views, the two big bridges, the public buildings and parks and zoos. But what they liked the most of all was to ride on the little cable car. They paid no attention to the trolleys and buses because they had plenty of those at home. This made Big Bill the bus just a bit jealous. After all, he boasted, I'm bigger and stronger and newer and faster and more economical. His route ran by the city hall, and he knew the city fathers.
One day, as Maybell was going along, taking her time and singing her song, Big Bill honked his horn and hooted, Out of my way! Out of my way, you little old cable car! I just heard the city father say the cable cars must go, that you're too old and out of date, much too slow and can't be safe. And worst of all, you don't make money. What they want is speed and progress and economy, and that means us. Ho, ho, poor little cable car, too bad you're not a bus. And he ground his gears and shoved his way into traffic, leaving a trail of gasoline fumes. And Maybell sad and unhappy. Oh me, oh my, oh dearie me, if this is true, what shall we do? Anyway, I'd rather be me, a little old cable car, than a great big old clumsy old stuffy old and yes smelly old bus, she said as she choked on the gasoline fumes. Of course, she didn't say this out loud, because she was much too polite. The rest of the day seemed long and dreary. Mabel's heart was sad and weary. The hills too high, the load too heavy. Her bell rang wrong. Dong, ding, ding, dong. Soon the news leaked out from City Hall. What the city fathers planned to do. Some people said, too bad. Hate to see them go. Progress, I suppose. Other side and said, we'll miss them. What a pity. For our city to lose her cable cars will be like any city. And one person said, why do we have to? We, the people, are the city. Why can't we decide? So they called a public meeting in the public library of all the friends of the cable cars and called themselves the Citizens Committee to Save the Cable Cars. Letters and telegrams poured in from all over the world, begging the city fathers to keep the cable cars. The citizens' committee stormed City Hall, demanding a chance for the people to vote, to answer the question, yes or no, shall the city keep her cable cars? Pooh, pooh, said the city fathers, just sentimental talk. Besides, you need to have a petition to put the, ballot, to put the question on the ballot. No sooner said than done, the people signed a petition and presented it to City Hall. So the fate of Maybelle and her sisters was put on the ballot as question one. The Citizens Committee got busy with posters, parade, and publicity. Every day there were speeches, and people started taking sides. Some said yes, and some said no. But nobody said perhaps or maybe. <coughs> the no people had facts and figures. The yes people answered with more. The no people made more noise, but the yes people worked harder. <coughs> Big Bill the bus wasn't sure he'd win, so late at night when the city slept, he crept out to practice climbing. Maybell's hip up and down, stop and start. Nothing to it, boasted Bill. What's all the fuss about this hill? Then came one damp and foggy night when Big Bill tried to stop halfway down. He slipped, he slid, he turned around. Whew, that was close, groaned Bill. I don't think I like this hill. At last election day arrived, when the people would decide by vote whether the cable cars would stay or go. The polls opened at seven in the morning and closed at eight at night. No more speeches, no more talking, just one vote from each and every one. Then no one could tell what the answer would be until the polls were closed and the votes all counted. The people stood around quietly and waited for the votes to be counted. Maybell waited, Big Bell waited, the whole city waited to see what the answer would be. Nine o'clock, ten o'clock, eleven o'clock, midnight. Hooray, shouted the people, the answer is yes, the cable cars have won. Three to one. Hooray for the cable cars, long may they live.
They gathered around Mabel and covered her with flowers. They turned her around and all climbed on. No fears, please. Ting, ting, let's go. This ride's on me. And free for all. It reminded Mabel of the good old times when everyone knew everyone else and life was gay and friendly. On her way back, Maybell met Big Bill. Congratulations, he honked. I'm glad you won. Your hill's too steep for me and much too slippery when wet. Thank you, rang Maybell, and let's be friends. Okay, said Bill, and by the way, I just heard the new city father say that you and your sisters each would have a new coat of paint. Also, they have named one day each year to celebrate as Cable Car Day. Home went Maybell, clingity-clang, ringing her gong and singing her song. Good news! Ting, ting! Good news, she sang. Our day's not done. It's just begun.